Uh, so my name is Liza Mansala. I'm currently a sous chef here at Segundo UC Davis. Okay. <laughs> Give me a little background about who you are and your childhood with the culinary. Um, so, you know, we didn't grow up with a whole lot of money. Um, so kind of whatever we had in the kitchen, uh, we essentially just had to cook. So it was a lot of canned veggies. I wasn't really exposed to, um, you know, fresh veggies until like later in life. Um, you know, based on that, that's where my style of cooking comes from. It's a lot of uh, fusion, a lot of street food and putting together flavors that normally don't go. Um, so my mom is Mexican, so naturally we cooked a lot of Mexican food, a lot of rice, a lot of beans, a lot of cheap cuts of meat, and a lot of stewing. So stuff that normally uh, would kind of get disregarded by most people is essentially what we took in and kind of <laughs> kind of made our own dish. Yeah. Okay. So you have like a lot of um, Hispanic cooking. Yes. In your so a lot, a lot of a lot of Hispanic cooking techniques. Well, my father was Filipino, and unfortunately, I didn't get to really get to know him that well until later in life. Mm. But I always took that Asian inspiration um, with me wherever I went. So the two cultures kind of coming together like a melting pot. Um, a lot of my dishes, um, you know, include like Mexican chicken and waffles, uh, Korean tacos, uh, fusion fajitas. Kind of see like uh, my street style growing up, you know, kind of in the hood um, and kind of reflecting that into my culinary background. So what are your, some of your fondest food memories? Give me like one from like your childhood and then one from like when you're, you're an adult. <laughs> so one of the ones that I remember like really distinctly is like uh, my mom was in the kitchen. She was making mole. Nice. which is um, like a, a very sophisticated like chocolate sauce and it has a lot of like undertones to it, a lot of sesame, a lot of peanut butter, chocolate. Um, and I was in the kitchen, I remember bugging her because she had like the little baking chocolates, the abuelitas. Nice. And I kept I was like, let me get some chocolate, let me get some chocolate. Fine, she's like, I'm me out here. And it was the most bitterest thing I've ever tasted in my wow. life. And it was like rock hard. So I, like, I'm like trying to chomp on this thing and I finally get a piece and it was so bitter, and I remember her just laughing her butt off at me. And she was like, "Now do you want to help?" I was like, okay, <laughs> kind of got me into it. Um, and that's when you learned like that chocolate sauce. You have to like mix it with milk, yeah, sugar, and everything. Yeah, it kind of. That's when I started uh, realizing you have to develop flavors. Yeah. Like, and what about like a uh, food memory from like yeah. current times? Like, current times? Yeah. Actually, I'll go back to uh, when I first started here um, as a cook, and I think it was like five years ago. Um, Chef Caesar um, saw like the talent, saw the inspiration in me that I really, really wanted to do this for a living. Wow. Um, he kind of took me under his wing, and we were prepping for a chancellor dinner, which is really huge. And here I am, you know, still really wet behind the ears. Like I, I don't know, <laughs> you know, I'm just kind of running around the kitchen. Wow. And he had me uh, make ash, and it was a uh, burnt leeks, burnt lemons, chocolate, and coffee. And I'm like, okay, you know, he was like, okay, so I want you to burn these lemons and burn these leeks on the grill. Like, all right, cool. So I get a nice char, you know, they're nice and black and not burnt. He was like, no, I want to burn. And so I go back to the guy, I was like, this fool wants me to actually burn food on purpose. And so you can imagine like what my thought process is at, like on this girl, like, dude, like I'm burning this food. Like, it's like so, so contrary. Yeah. Like, and I'm like, like, dude, like you gotta be kidding me, chef. Like, all right, you know, I mean, the answer in the kitchen is always yes, chef. So I burn the crap out of these things and he has me uh, put them in the food processor, get them to a nice powder and then we rub them on like a big old like hunk of lamb. And lamb is something, again, that I've never really been introduced to. And every time I had it, it wasn't done correctly. So I wasn't really a big fan. I was like, all right, dude. So I'm burning food and I'm putting it on lamb. All right, dude. And it, honestly, once it came out and we did it on the grill, it was one of the best meals I've ever had in my entire life. And it let me know, like, this guy right here, that's who I'm going to follow. That's who. That's who's going to be my UC Davis, like, chef. Very nice. And nice. It, was a, it was a really cool experience to be like questioning something and then they get like kind of proven wrong and that's like the great part of this industry is that there's always something new there's always some other technique and like you know you would never think burnt food would actually taste good yeah and it was like freaking delicious dude especially there's new techniques developing with like the, the scientology uh, the, the, the gastronomy, yeah. Stuff. gastronomy yeah. yeah we um we actually did an event here a while back and we did um uh, it was like jellified uh, salsa verde cubes, um, a black bean puree, and a uh, cured pork belly with um, a cilantro lime foam. It was it was pretty badass, dude. That's yeah. cool. That's cool. Yeah, and that was again like Chef Caesar's project, so you can hint why. Like you'll probably hear me talk a lot about him because uh, you know he's the one that really uh, inspired my growth and like really like took the time to develop me to you know get me where I am today. So you currently work at Segundo. Your position is a sous chef? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Where do you see yourself like going into the future? Like you know, I've been asked that question a lot. Um, because like to me, like it took so long to get here and to find this passion in my life and find this drive. Huh. Like I'm really like 
kind of satisfied right now and just being where I'm at, you know, kind of just enjoying the moment. Um, I've looked at the five year plan and, you know, I just I just want to cook. You know, I just want to be in the position to create and help develop people to be enthusiastic as I am about food. You know what I mean? Like, uh-huh. you know, everyone has these great plans, you know, food truck, I want to own my own restaurant. Like, that's great. Like me, I just want to like inspire you. I just want to be part of something, you know what I mean? Whatever the case may be. And uh, you work under Chef Caesar. Yep. You're like his apprentice? Kind of, yeah. So it's like we don't really have like those titles here at Davis just because, you know, there's like all the political mumbo jumbo. Wow. But essentially, yeah, yeah once, it, once he told me to burn food on purpose um, and asked me to work a 14 hour shift my first week here at Davis, like it kind of let me know like this guy's interested in something. It's something I have, something like I haven't really seen or unleashed yet. And because of him, you know, I started believing in myself more and started, you know, trying new things and thinking outside of this like little box that I have, uh-huh. you know, and trying new flavors and not being afraid, you know, um, it kind of developed into like here now, you know, I'm creating, you know, recipes daily, you know, I'm u- re- utilizing products, you know, to make sure that it's sustainable, that that things being wasted, making sure things are getting repurposed. So um, like, yeah, he's like definitely definitely my mentor like for sure <laughs> it sounds like he definitely saw something within you yeah and is like really pushing you toward yeah that. he did like uh you did make me cry I go, What's <laughs> it's like oh, man. you know what i mean like you know no one's perfect in the kitchen you know it is a stressful environment but you know when you when you push yourself beyond like your own limits you'd be surprised like what what the outcome is because you know here as i am you know a little girl from the hood right. you know took some culinary school classes didn't ever actually ever finish and now, you know, I'm a sous chef here at UC Davis. You know, my pictures are like on recipes, you know, I've developed over, God, over at least 30 recipes that are in menu rotation. So, it's, wow. yeah, it's wow. pretty Very cool. Yeah, it's really neat. So what is your culinary background, like educational background? Probably like seven or eight years ago, um, I temped here at Davis. Uh-huh. So, like, the temp at UC, I think it was like Acrobat or something. And I really liked, you know, the fast paced environment. I liked the, uh, the people, like the culture. And so I went and went in and applied uh, for a job. And unfortunately I didn't get it, but they're like, dude, we love your attitude, but you just don't know anything about ounces or fluid ounces or how many ounces in a gallon, like how many ounces in a pound. Like, I don't know these things. And so they were like, you know, if you get go to school, get some education and come back, we'll definitely keep your name in the hat. So that kind of inspired me to go to culinary school. Um, I'm almost done with the uh, Managed First program. I think I have two more certificates. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's out of 11, I believe, and um, I think like some GE courses that eventually I'll be going back to this summer to uh, complete the program. Now that I'm sous chef, I kind of want my degree to back it up. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, yeah, it's really just uh, being in the kitchen and being hands on, just being that yes person. like Getting getting that experience. Yeah. And it's really like, and you have to go out and go get it. Like, no one's going to give it to you. Like, you know, someone's like, oh, hey, can you do this? And you say, no, you're not going to get yourself any further. It's mm-hmm. always being that yes person. I think that's like the best way to gain knowledge is just by saying yes. What are some of your uh, milestones and like notable achievements and like points of like recognition that like you kind of uh, have achieved over sure. over this course? So I was the uh, first cook um, to do a chef special, which is like really huge. And that was when I introduced my uh, Korean tacos huh. um, with a uh, pineapple cashew fried rice. Um, and once I was promoted to lead, I was also the first lead to do a chef special. And um, I believe that was the fusion fajitas. And then once I was sue, um, I did uh, the Mexican chicken and waffles. And all these dishes sold out, and that's over 1,200 portions a piece. Um, also, I was the first lead to uh, work with um, Chef Roger and Chef Emily for uh, research and development. So essentially for an entire summer, we were in, locked in a kitchen together and it was literally just dishing out new recipes every single day. And that was a, a really cool thing to be a part of because elites never pushed these boundaries before. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I got turned down for sous chef, I think like five or six times and I kept pushing like, okay, so what more do I need to know? What else can we do? Why are we not developing our cooks into this? And kind of started transitioning the program into more of a, uh, like looking within instead of looking without, you know. We did a Good Day Sacramento, I believe, in 2017. It was for the Food and Film Festival. Yeah. And uh, that's where some of the gastronomy came into play. So we did, um, I guess, like a, a small um, arepa sacker with a black bean puree, uh, avocado sauce, um, a hot sauce, uh, and a lime cilantro foam mm-hmm. with uh, some pickled onions on top. Um, it was featured, I think we were on camera for like five minutes. You could just kind of see me in the back, like very mixing it up. <laughs> you know, Chef, of course, you know, is, is our front runner. So I got to help out with that. And uh, 
a lot of our pop-ups have been um, in public, uh, publicized for the Aggie Reader, which is the like the weekly magazine that comes out for the students. Uh -huh. And so we uh, we did like a ramen series um, during the winter quarter, and it was uh, we opened up with the BDI ramen, and then we did a mole ramen. And then we did a pasole <laughs> we were like ramen down, dude. Nice, but nice. Uh, but all of them like really sold, and like I think we had like two hundred and twenty kids like per you know per one coming in during our slow time, which is you know really huge. During the slow time. During the slow time, yeah, you know, okay. and like you know right now with COVID, like our max numbers are at three hundred. So mm -hmm. to pull those numbers, you know, with those dishes during that slow period was like it was pretty cool. You were saying uh, pre-COVID, you guys would do like twelve hundred. Oh full yeah. Covers, right? Oh, easily, and uh, like right now with the anticipated return. It's going to be almost double that, you know, so because twenty four to yeah, thousand yeah, because we're going to get the second year seniors, people that took that year off or this year off, uh -huh. and then our new crop of freshmen that are coming in. So we're going to be as boss of the law, hence like the making sure you get a good night rest, make sure you're you're getting your mind right before you come in the kitchen because the stress levels are through the roof. And if you didn't sleep or you got something else going on, like that's going to you know project on people that you're instructing and like you know your team that follows you. Mm -hmm. And you got to make sure you're like kind of in the right state of mind. You don't want to like snap at them unnecessarily. Exactly. You know, like, you know, yeah. people have that Gordon Ramsay image. Bro! It's like I've worked at restaurants where, you know, I'm, like our cannoli cream, like, you know, fell. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I've had an Italian chef throw a freaking pan at me and throw plates at me. Like, it's, it's, I've seen it. Damn. You know what I mean? I've seen some, I've seen some stuff in some kitchens. Um, and I definitely don't want to be that person. I don't want to be that leader. You know what I mean? Yeah. I want to be that one. Like, oh, you have a problem? You feel comfortable enough to come talk to me about it. And then I can, you know, coach and guide you. And, you know, at least just know, like, okay, maybe you're, you're having a bad day. Okay, so I'm not going to, you know, press you too much today. Like, you know, take it, like, not easy street, but, like, you know, not, not ride you so much, you know? And, yeah. Definitely sounds like you... Uh you know how to approach the situation as a team leader instead of like a boss or like a dictator, kind of like just pointing fingers at everybody. And, yeah, because yeah. like and that, and like that's that's the whole respect respecting, and that's that's why when I said you know, like when I got promoted, it felt like the team won mm -hmm. because you know your team needs to respect you and has to respect you. And the thing is, like it's not just given. You're just like, oh, you're my boss. Here you go. You know they're gonna press you, especially like if you're new. They're gonna see how far you're willing to give them. Huh. And you know, because they saw the struggles and saw how much I wanted this, like they, they, they respect me. You know, men, men I like all oh, like me. You know what I mean? But you know, they all respect me, and like you know, they have that confidence, that, like in me as a leader. And like that's something I really take a lot of pride in because not a lot of people have that. And um, you know, that's something that I hold very dear to my heart, and like I take very seriously. I went up for sous chef five times mm -hmm. before I got it on the six, and I actually got it on my five year anniversary, like to the day. Um, so it was kind of a, it was always a struggle to go up and be well prepared and feeling that like hey you know I, I earned this and then be like no you still need to work on this mm -hmm. and to get knocked down you know most people would you know give up they're like well, you know f this you know why am I even trying the, you know whatever the case may be but uh, to me it was like dude you tell me no well let me tell you why <laughs> you know what I mean and so like it kind of drove me to. Uh, push myself to be better even though like you know like it hurt every single time because it's something I've wanted and you know you work hard for it and I fought and I fought and I finally got it and um you know it made me uh you know really happy like you know I, I cried a little bit when they told me just because like it was such a uh, it was such a joy and like it was really cool to see my team react when I got that you know I, they sent me like letters cards you know it was it was an incredible feeling because for me to win they felt like they won because they watched the struggle, they watched all the time and money and, uh, you know, the hours I put in, you know, the blood, sweat, the tears, you know, staying, you know, 12, 13 hours every day, and, you know, reading books and coming to work early and not getting paid and just walking around and seeing what else I can help with. Um, I was definitely like a, a struggle <laughs> within itself, for sure. What are your views on sustainability like within the business oh i mean you have to be sustainable as possible if we're not sustainable we don't have food to eat yeah um so again it's a really cool part uh cool cool thing to be part of with davis is like we have our student farm we actually have students that are growing you know food on campus for us to use and it's not just like small amounts like you know we went to the cooler you saw those buckets that we get you know we try to incorporate those as much as we possibly can um, all of our vendors, uh, we try to look at our carbon footprint. Um, we try to be as local as possible. 
Um, I know Pack Sheep Foods a local um, is a local one. We make sure all of our fish are um, farm raised, mm. and uh, we're not utilizing like one part of the animal. Like say, for instance, we're not going to do a special about you know lingua, which is a uh, you know tongue because it's only one tongue per cow. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what else can we do? What else can we process in there to make sure that we use all of it? What about um, like some of your strengths in the kitchen? Uh, my strengths, um, definitely uh, flavor building. Um, and again, like fusion, um, which goes back into sustainability su- sustainability and reutilizing um, leftovers, which essentially is my role as um, the production manager or production kitchen super, or however you want to look at it. Yeah. Um, so it's like, you know, say we have like some leftover top rounds. Okay, so we don't want to, you know, not to say we don't want to donate it, but we want to reutilize that for our students. What can we come up with? So today's pop-up, we came up with carne asada fries. And so, like, now we can get rid of all this salsa that we had left over, this sour cream that's sitting in this people of the gallo, you know, the fries that we're sitting on. So it's um, kind of just, like, repurposing, reutilizing, and um, really uh, keeping my brain active. I'm always trying to create something new. What inspires you to keep going? My mom, definitely. Absolutely. Um... You know, she was, uh, she got away from me um, when I was like 24. So, you know, still partying, still, you know, living that kind of lifestyle. And she never really got to see what I became. So every day when I come in, um, it makes me want to be better. She never got to see it. So if I can go to bed at night knowing that she would be proud, that's that's what keeps me going. I think she definitely would be. Oh, uh, thanks, man. Yeah. I'm sorry to get on to you. Yeah, I don't no talk about it. <laughs> no problem. So then what, what is your dream goal? Like, well, yeah. I'm living it. You're living it. I'm living it. You're you know what I mean? Like, right now. yeah, you know, um, you know, people look at like, you know, being a chef, like you're going to make all this great money and like you can open your restaurant like that. And you're going to be on like freaking chef network or food network. And, you know, that's great. You know, and I, I love for people to have that drive, you know, me, like this is my dream. I wanted to be a sous chef. I wanted to be someone that, you know, came up from, you know, the hood and became someone. And not just not just someone, but people, someone that some, like everyone respects because they saw the struggles, they saw what I've been through. Um, you know, so to me right now, like I am living my dream. You know what I mean? I get to wear this coat every day. I get to come into a building where people are inspired to cook, and I get to feed the future minds of America. And like these, like this kid I'm feeding this burger to, can cure cancer tomorrow. Like who knows? You know, the possibilities are endless. But you know, my dream goal, like this is it. You know, nice. and it could change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you have uh, some dishes that you're working on right now. You're going to be doing some Korean old dishes. Yeah, some uh, some banchan because um, we're going to uh, like revamp breakfast. Is our new um, it's kind of our new thing, like a, a healthier, lighter approach uh, to breakfast and something that's our more culturally based. So uh, one of my assignments is uh, to come up with like an Asian uh, Asian themed bar, and so one of them is the cold side. So I'm working on um, a spicy uh, spinach salad. Uh, pickled veggies, uh, steamed eggplants, uh, working on kimchi pancakes, uh, scallion pancakes. Um, we're in the uh, middle of working with CSC, um, that's our culinary support center, uh, uh, making a Asian style breakfast sausage. So uh, we'll be doing some footage of that later. Nice. All right, well, let's go take a look at uh, some of your prep uh, with the Asian uh, side dishes. Sounds good. Cool. Let's do it. Spicy spinach. Okay. It's a Korean influence, and this is going to be served on our cold sides with our flavors of Asian-inspired breakfast. We're actually even making a an Asian-style breakfast sausage patty, which is really I'm really excited about. So this will be with our cold side, and we plan on serving it with um, colder veggies. And again, just trying to bring some new light to breakfast instead of you know your average I'm going to eat this and go back to sleep kind of stuff. <laughs> stuff that'll actually give you energy and keep you moving throughout the day. 